So my comment about forever is that I was actually acquired by Sun. I had a little consulting company. There were about four of us there. And Sun decided they would like to use this consulting company as <coughs> the start of a research laboratory. So uh, Eric Schmidt, actually, now head of Google, bought us. And we had this wonderful conversation with the attorney. They said, well, now you'll be new employees of Sun. And I said, wait a minute. This is one corporation buying another. And if Macy's buys Gimbel's and you have a 25-year Gimbel's employee, he doesn't suddenly become a one-month Macy's employee. The lawyer says, yeah, that's quite right. From your point of view, it's continuity of employment. Well, turns out we were older than the sun. So I demanded badge number minus one. <laughs> Didn't get it. But uh, for all other purposes, my date of employment is the date of the founding of Sun. It's been a very nice arrangement, and has worked out very well for me. I'm pleased to still be here. Half a dozen years later, Scott said, you know, yours is the most successful acquisition we've ever made. And I said to him, Scott, I know what that means. That means that after half a dozen years, the principals are all still working for you. And he said, you got it right. I'd like to talk today about leadership. And uh, leadership is a very peculiar property of human beings. It's a little hard to define, but my definition of it is it's that property of a person which will cause a bunch of others to follow him or her. Now, that doesn't tell you how to get there. It just tells you how to recognize a leader when you see one. I. Uh, went to the ROTC when I was in college. And one of the things Uncle Sam's army thinks is important is leadership. They have the idea that it wins wars. And they kind of think that's their business. And so they thought it would be important to teach prospective young lieutenants leadership. So I had a course in leadership. And the truth of the matter is that the army hasn't a clue what it is or how to teach it. A friend of mine once said, there are some subjects that you can teach, and there are other subjects that you can only learn. And I think leadership may be in the latter category. There's no way to teach it. So I'm not here to try and teach you leadership. I'm here to talk about it a little bit in the hope that you will pick up some things which may be of use to you in developing your own as you learn this skill for yourself. There's a difference between leadership and management. Management, I think, is the avoidance of surprises. Good management is planning for the future. It's doing the budgeting right. It's making sure you hire the right people. It's making sure that the tasks that you've taken on actually get completed on time and well done. It's planning. It has to do with taking care of all the details so that everything can happen. That isn't leadership. I had a funny lesson in this when I was uh, early in my career. I happened to be put on the uh, scientific advisory board for the Navy. It was called NRAC, the Navy Research Advisory Committee. That was a very interesting uh, assignment. I was the youngest member of the committee, and there were a number of more senior folk who kind of took me under their wing and led me around and taught me things. And uh, one time we had a talk by Admiral Zumwalt. Admiral Zumwalt at the time was the chief of naval operations. He was the top sailor in the Navy. And he complained to us that he couldn't get the Bureau of Ships interested in building 80-knot ships. Most naval vessels go, you know, 30 knots or so if they're steaming full speed ahead. He said, I think that getting the Navy to where it's needed sooner is important. But I can't get the Bureau of Ships interested in making ships that go faster. Well, now, here's an interesting circumstance. The top sailor in a military organization can't get his organization to do what he wants them to do. And I puzzled to myself and said, 
what hope as a civilian organization? How can the top guy in a civilian organization get it to do what he thinks is the important thing to do? And I think the answer is leadership. How is it that Jonathan manages and controls and leads Sun? What is it that he must do to get all the thousands of employees working in a common direction, doing something in common that they feel good about, that they feel is important, that they are willing to contribute not just the minimum, but the maximum of their effort to. There's some magic there, and it's called leadership. And when leaders have it, lots of other things follow. When it's absent, organizations have low morale, kind of putts along doing the minimum that is feasible that they can get away with, and sometimes organizations die. So what is this elusive thing called leadership? If you think about the conductor of an orchestra, the conductor of an orchestra does a bunch of management. He is, after all, the person who decides who shall be first violin and who shall be second violin, who is going to lead the flute section, who is going to be the top percussionist, and so on. He's the person who decides what we will play in the concert. He does a bunch of management. But more important than that, during rehearsals, he is the critic of whether the music is good. And during the concert performance, it is his enthusiasm and his encouragement of the orchestra that makes the difference between a mediocre performance and a great performance. That's the leadership part. It's the difference between the mediocre performance and the outstanding performance. You've been selected as potential leaders at Sun. I don't think there's one of you who thinks that being a prospective manager at Sun is nearly as interesting a role. Prospective leaders at Sun. 